back when I was a student, I actually used to really struggle playing walking bass. So in this lesson, I want to share four things that I learned that you can apply to a 12 bar blues to make your walking lines much, much better. How's it going guys? Hugh Richardson from OnlineBassGuitar.com here. Just a quick reminder, if you do like what you see in this video, then please do consider subscribing. Also, everything we talk about in this lesson builds on the first lesson from the Walking Bass series that I've done. So if you haven't seen that lesson on Walking Fundamentals, it's in the card up here, click it up here if you want to go check it out. If you have seen it, stick around so we can get through these four things. And the four things we're going to focus on are going to be the chords and scales we've got to know, what to play when chords last one bar, what to play when chords last two bars, and then how we can make our playing sound really authentic and really bluesy by working on this turnaround section at the end of the form. So chords and scales. What we're going to have to know to play through this blues are the arpeggio of each chord. So each chord is a dominant seventh chord, uh, which will be this. So that would be our root, major third, fifth, and flat seventh. And I think it's best to practice each one of these First of all, just over one octave, so our one chord is E7, so you can either play it there or with the open E string. Play there, then we want to play A7, so A, C sharp, E, G, B7, B, D sharp, F sharp, A. And if you really want to get into it, you can practice these over multiple octaves as well, just to really get around the neck and know the fingerboard. Next, we want to know the scale that goes with each one of these chords. So typically in a, a blues like this, mixolydian mode is like your best friend for each one of these chords. So that means E mixolydian, A mixolydian, and B mixolydian. So this shape is quite easy to grasp actually, which is nice. So basically, we play up a major scale until we get to the seventh note, and then rather than playing the seventh as we do normally, we move that seventh down one fret or down one semitone, and then play the octave. So we get a scale that sounds like this. And then we want to just move that shape to A, move it to B, and then E. And then of course, we can do it down there as well if we want. So we've got all the scales that we need for each one of the chords. So now if we look at what to play over the chords that just last for one bar. So I'm thinking first of all, if we look at those first four bars, we've got E7 for a bar, which goes to A7 for one bar, and then E7, two bars. So here, this is where we can use that triad plus approach note concept that we looked at in the first video. So again, if you're unfamiliar with that, Click up here, head back, watch the first video, and then come back to this. So what you want to play is the triad, and then an approach either a semitone above or below the next root note of the next chord. So I could play my E, B flat, semitone above the A, and then I can get through to the next chord like that. So there, when we get up to the A, either you could do a kind of double approach note and walk through chromatically there like that, or, or you could just play the triad and then get back to the E that way. Over the course that lasts for two bars, we can be a little bit more adventurous because we've got that much more time on the chord. We've got double the length of time, two bars. So we can start to incorporate some of the scales a little bit more to almost sort of explore the tonality of the dominant seventh chord a little bit. So in the demo, when we got to that E7 that lasts for two bars, I played something like that. So we're up the arpeggio, root third, fifth, but then sixth of E mixolydian, flat seven, and then that little scale fragment back down. And then I go to A. So I'm, I'm not trying to play the whole thing like that. I'm just using little bits of the scale, little tiny pieces. And then A. triads and then we can get to the turnaround in a second now a little bonus tip that this made a huge difference for me when I was learning how to walk through changes and really trying to make my walking lines sound a lot more exciting and a lot more authentic than just playing arpeggios or just playing through scales like that you want to always tell the listener where the bass line is going uh, so I don't mean you know you reach out and say oh yeah we're going to a7 you know of course not I mean as funny as that would be um, what I mean by this is you want to have a really strong directional component to your bass lines. So if I play over the first um, 
four bars, let's say, if I play something like the this, if I play here, so there, can you hear, I've got four notes that are descending down to A. So I'm using a mix of the scale plus a chromatic approach down to the A, and it really feels like the, um, the line has a kind of, like a center of gravity almost, like it's being pulled down towards the A7. And then if I do the same here, so there I went up to my flat seven on the A, down to the third, and then a kind of double chromatic approach. So there was like a real directional movement of upwards ascending semitones into that E7. Check this out, before we get onto the last tip, I'm gonna play the whole 12 bar form, form rather, just on my own, and hear what a difference trying to put those little directional movements into each chord will make. So we'll start here, and then chromatically up, and then a little walk down, chromatic walk up again, So there, we get loads more movement and it sounds like the line has got so much more purpose. But what did I do right at the end? That little cool sort of bluesy. This thing here. So this is known as a turnaround and this is one of the most important fundamentals of blues walking bass. So if you wanna be a good walking bass player, you have to know about this. So rather than skim over them in this video, I thought they were so important that I made their own video. So if you click on the link up here, you can head across, check that out, and learn some really cool, authentic blues turnarounds. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do consider subscribing and leaving your thumbs up down below. Cheers again for watching, and I'll see you real soon. Take care.